I just want to say um, we are excited about visiting with you today. And so we have a great webcast, a great interview here with Mark Lefebvre from Kobo. But, but before we start that, I, I do um, want to welcome you and say that I am Nancy Bauman. I am the owner of Book Karma. And I'm also known as the book professor because I help uh, everyday people, usually really busy professionals, write high impact nonfiction books that will establish themselves as an expert in their field and increase their credibility and gain a following. So I kind of had two hats on, so I'm um, really glad to welcome you here today. Um, so whether you're joining us today live or through our video replay or through podcasts, we're really glad to have you and I am anxious to introduce our guest to you today. Um, but first of all, if you're here for the first time, let me tell you a little bit about what Book Karma is. And you may have seen the, the trailer, tail end of that trailer, but Book Karma is an international book marketing platform that allows authors to break out of the bounds of their own social networks to reach readers around the world by using the social networks of other authors. And so quite simply, how it works is that you use your ISBN and import your book to Book Karma. You write the social messages that go out about your book, and it's delivered to a book queue. And so other authors are on the platform. It's an author-only platform. So other authors are on the platform, and as they are looking through that queue and see your book, they can click on it. And with one click, they share your book information, that's your cover, your title, your description, and the social messages that you wrote. With one click, they share your book to their network of followers. And so who follows authors? Well, readers do. And that's why it makes it so valuable is because their other readers are seeing your book in their Facebook feed or in Twitter uh, posts. And it's not a paid ad, it's just, a, it's, it's just there as by virtue of following that author. So your book is exposed to an entirely new whole group of readers that you could never reach on your own. So we're really proud of it. It only costs $1.99 a month to be involved. So if you're not on Book Karma yet, we encourage you to do so. So anyway, um, I one of my goals as the owner of Book Karma and as the book professor is to share other resources with you all because independent authors and self-published authors there's a lot to learn out there there's a lot of options for you to have and there's also a lot of ways to kind of get taken if you will by some not so reputable folks and I don't want that to happen and so I, I met Mark in I think it was in March at the PubSense Author Summit in Charleston South Carolina and it was a great pleasure. We connected and I found out more about Kobo and really wanted to share that with you so that you'll know um, about a whole other option that you have for marketing your books globally. And so Mark, he is the Director of Self-Publishing and Author Relations at Kobo, a writer himself. Mark was hired by Kobo to create a self-publishing portal to make it easier for indie authors and small publishers to get their titles into Kobo's, Kobo's global catalog. I'm going to keep emphasizing the word global, global, global. Now this part is called Kobo Writing Life and it was launched in the summer of 2012 and currently sells as many units on a weekly basis as any of the big five publishers. Wow, that really sounds like something you're going to want to be part of. So, Mark was a former president of the Canadian Books, Booksellers Association and has worked in the book industry in virtually every type of bookstore since 1992. And I imagine you grew up reading books, right, Mark? I'm the, one of the big nerds you'll find, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm the biggest. I'm the big, I'm the big book nerd. So, anyway. So, tell us a little about your background first. You said you've been, you know, working in bookstores since 92. And what, what was your journey? That brought you to Kobo. Uh, you know what? It was a uh, it was a time job. I uh, I was in university and I was uh, looking for some work and uh, had a job opening for Christmas help uh, at a bookstore. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, I had always uh, been a and 
wanted to continue to be a writer. So I thought, well, wow, we're working at a bookstore. I'm one of the best places you could be. And, you know, there's I, plenty, I to, the there's plenty to do when there's no customers around, right? Oh, yeah, no, no, that's it. There's plenty to do. And it doesn't involve reading all the <laughs> I know. A lot of people think it is. But uh, it, was, it was kind of funny. Um, I got bit by the book bug. And I ended up staying uh, after uh, Christmas help. I got a permanent position with the store. And from that point on, I have worked for virtually any uh, book, type of book retailer that exists. Um, online, uh, in, uh, in stores, in box stores, in, in, in independent stores, in campus bookstores. And, um, and, and then in, you know, in 2011, late 2011, Kobo was looking for somebody to, to launch their self-publishing uh, platform. Knowing that I had been involved in self-publishing and traditional publishing, mm -hmm. I think we lost our sound for a second there. Okay, he's gonna try. He's gonna log out and log back in. Sorry about that technical glitch. You know, um, technology is wonderful until it's not. So anyway, thanks for bearing with us. It's funny because we always do test runs, and we did all our technology tests on Monday. And so that was great. But anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about how um, the conference that Mark and I were at. We were at the PubSense Author Summit in Charleston, South Carolina, which was a great event. Um, and let's see, Mark, give us a test and see if you're back. Okay, so he's, he's looking into it. I, he doesn't seem to be speaking. Yeah. Perfect. Let's hear you. Test, test. Uh Test, test. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't. I don't know. I don't know why it cut so, out for no reason. Well, anyway, you were telling us, um, maybe you could answer the question again about, you said Kobo was looking for someone and... To, yeah, somebody to uh, to, to create um, um, a tool for, for self-published authors and small publishers mm -hmm. to get their work into Kobo's catalog. Yeah. And so I was hired. Well, yeah, that's great. And I, I want to mention that Kobo, you're in Canada, right? That's right. We are. Uh, we were born out of Toronto. Uh, Kobo uh, was basically created on the premise that you should be able to read any ebook on any device at any time. Yes. And we initially launched without a reader. We launched free apps for every platform, and it was actually our customers that demanded that we produce a reader for them. And now we have the Kobo family of devices, including uh, the world's only premier waterproof device, the Kobo H2O, which so we launched. So you can read in the pool, right? <laughs> Yeah, now you can read in the bed, the bath, the pool, the beach, um, and it's all, and, and you're, you're going to be okay. I can't tell you how okay. many books I have that have those little rippled edges from being in the bathtub <laughs> or by the pool. Okay, I, if you could just back up one minute yeah, and tell sure. us more about Kobo and okay. about maybe the sure. evolution of Kobo and how you yep. got and where and what you do and offer now. Products okay, so, uh, Kobo was born out of a bookseller, a, a chain bookstore in Canada, uh, mm -hmm. probably be similar to a Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. uh, called Chapters Indigo. Mm -hmm. And we were initially born as a sort of a side project launched out of the bookseller in recognition that uh, you know ebooks were coming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was back in 2009, and uh, Kobo is an anagram for book, so it's just just sort of a different way of spelling book. <laughs> and, oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. And we, we're, I never um, knew that. That's that's a nice little piece of trivia. And like we it. are. Uh, it's because we we started in Canada. Canada is our, our our most significant market. We are in 190 countries around the world. Canada, of course, is our is our biggest market. So uh, when a lot of people in in the U.S. Uh, use Kindle as as uh, synonymous for e-reader, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find people in Canada will say Kobo to that same extent. So you so have a device, right? You have a device? Sure. Is that right? We have devices. We have mm -hmm. many devices now. We have the Kobo family of devices, the e-ink devices, and of course you get a free apps on every tablet. But waiting the subway or the bus or something like that in, in downtown Toronto, which is where Kobo's head office is, mm -hmm. you'll, uh, you'll see, um, whereas in the U.S. you may see a lot of Kindle devices mm -hmm. um, or, or even Nook devices um, for that matter, you'll see that when someone's reading on an e-ink device, Chances are it's a couple of devices. Well, so, um, can you very, tell me how popular. you differentiate between the Kindle or the the Nook? The, what do you mean? How well, uh, is it, what is different about Kobo? You said something about reading. Okay, so yeah. uh, Kobo um, uses the EPUB standard, which yeah. is the standard format for eBooks in the industry. Mm -hmm. Nook actually uses the EPUB standard, as does e, uh, iBooks. The the only company that's using a different version of which is the Moby, is the Kindle. So 
technically, you could buy an ebook from Kobo, and so long as the publisher hasn't put DRM on it, you could read that on your Nook. Oh, okay. Um, which yeah. is good. And, and vice versa, if you buy a, an ebook from mm -hmm. Nook and there's no DRM on it, you can easily load that to your Kobo device and read it. So, so it, you're device the, agnostic, right? Pretty much. It's so mm -hmm. long you could read the you could read the EPUB on our devices. Of course, mm -hmm. everything's synced up in the cloud, so you can also be reading on your iPhone yeah. on the free Kobo app. And then when you go and open it up, you know you get, you get home um, because maybe you're reading in the grocery store for ten minutes while you're waiting in line, and then mm -hmm. and then you get you know you, you sit down at lunchtime and you open up your Kobo e reader. Um, when you're on Wi-Fi, it will connect and say you were reading on a different device at a different spot. Do you want to move to that spot? Sure. Because yeah. you, you're 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 bookmarking as, as you continue to read. Yeah. So the, the concept, um, we are in, in um, read more is the hashtag that Kobo has been pushing okay. out. We are encouraging people to read more, to read anywhere, to read on any device they have because we mm -hmm. know that reading enriches people's lives. And that's really what Kobo is all about. That's all mm -hmm. we do. We don't sell other things. We don't sell lawnmowers and refrigerators or any other things like that. Kobo stands for readers, and that's what yeah. we're all about. And that's why the yeah. read more hashtag is really important. Yeah. And then to, to turn that into the Kobo writing life realm, which is where I live and breathe, uh, write more is, is our mantra. We're encouraging authors to you know write every day and, and yeah. because that's how you become a better writer. And, and obviously that's how you get the book done so you can actually get it published, etc. Yeah. Okay, so when you, what, what did Kobo look like when you joined it? And what does it look oh, like Kobo. now? Mm -hmm. So we're about 500 people. Oh. We're, um, we were, um, did you lose me again? No, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. I still Sorry. hear you. We were about five, five, uh, 500 people right now. When I joined the company, I think there were maybe 200 people in the company. Mm -hmm. So we've expanded very, very fast. And we were acquired, uh, we, were, we were created in, in, in Canada as a Canadian company, but we were acquired by Rakuten. Which is a huge Japanese company. Now, Rakuten, yeah, may be familiar that uh, they own companies uh, such as uh, Pinterest and oh, really? Viber. Wow! And um, that's good company. And recently, they acquired Overdrive as well. Oh, okay. So there's a huge family of, of Rakuten companies. Mm -hmm. Linkshare is one of them as well. And so, part of Rakuten's um, growth and, and 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 looking at what they were going to do is they wanted to have the best ebook reading experience. And mm -hmm. so. We're now part of the Rackets and Family, which is great because there's opportunities for us to partner sure, with these yeah. other. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, that's very impressive company. Well, when you first got on, before we opened it up to our viewers and stuff, it was interesting because you had a name tag on. I'm like, what are you wearing? Have you been to some sort of event? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the name tag thing. I thought that was very, that was kind of interesting. Well, uh, you know, when we, when we first started, I mean, initially, Cobalt was with 11 people in a room, you know, all working mm -hmm. together and you knew everyone really, really well. And then even by the time that I joined, when we were at about 200 people, uh, you still knew a lot of the people, but, you know, when you move to the to the kitchen and you're getting a coffee or, or whatever, mm -hmm. you weren't necessarily sure that person's mm -hmm. name. So uh, one of the great things about uh, Rakuten uh, culture is is name tags. It's a, it's a very respectful and polite thing mm -hmm. to have your name tag with your picture on it on mm -hmm. So that when you're speaking with someone, if they've forgotten your name or they didn't oh, know you, yeah. it gives them a chance to know who this person is. Yeah. Uh, and I found that a great thing because there's so many fascinating people yeah. in, in our company that, you know, you bump into in the lunchroom, but you don't know who they are and what they do. And that yeah. at least allows you to have that connection. When you go to mm -hmm. a conference, you know, we met at pub sets. Yeah. Um, when you go to a conference, people have name tags on. So mm -hmm. you go, oh, you're, you know. So you're Nancy. Oh, hey, I remember to exchange an email with you. So it really allows uh, us to remain connected to one another within the company in the same way that we encourage authors to connect with other people yeah. in the industry. I, I thought you might come around to that because it sounds like you all are a lot about community, about connecting and about um, not, you know, you could think of you know online bookstores as being just this real impersonal thing, but it look, I think you guys have a different approach that you really want to you know have your authors feel like they're part of something, right? And um, for sure. So, what was your charge when you came to Kobo? What what were you charged with accomplishing? Um, I was really really lucky in that when I was hired, I was basically told mm -hmm. um, come up with a solution that makes it easy for authors and small publishers to get their work into our catalog. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay, and that, just that can stop right there. Just stop right there for just a second. 
Why was that important? What is different about your catalog than okay, so, you know, the um, normal distribution our readers, chances? Our readers are need content, and, and, and we need content to provide to our readers. So mm -hmm. we constantly need new and fresh and good content mm -hmm. for our readers. And we do have readers who are very discerning readers that mm -hmm. they consume a lot of content. So they're mm -hmm. always looking for something new. So for us to do our job well, we have to work with publishers around the world to yeah. get content into the catalog. We knew, of course, Kobo knew that there was great material being produced yeah. by authors mm -hmm. who weren't coming through traditional publishers. Yes. And we wanted to make it easy for them to get their work in the catalog. Because to get your work into the catalog, you've got to create Onyx files and oh, spreadsheets yeah. and all kinds yeah. of weird yeah. stuff and FTP files yeah. and cool. the whole bit. And we just wanted to say, no, um, there are a lot of authors and smaller publishers who don't have an ID to T department. But we should make their work available so that consumers who want to read this great content can have access to it. So again, free portal, make it easy to port your work into our catalog. And ideally what mm -hmm. that does is that serves our readers with a mm -hmm. far greater selection. Yeah. Um, so I love, the their experience better. I love the focus is on the readers because that's what books are about too. They're about the readers, not about the author. Yeah. And yeah. That, there has to be this matchmaking to connect the material, you know, the content with the readers, which is, you know, book karma is one way to do that. But authors need, they need every avenue. And so we talked about you being a Canadian company. Are your readers just in Canada? Oh, God, no. Yeah. Now, we have a huge readership in Canada, yeah. but we also have readers in 190 countries around the world. Now, okay, 190 countries, that's close to almost every country in the world. Um, we regularly, on a weekly basis, sell in 150 countries, mm -hmm. uh, which is still pretty significant a because a lot of authors, <laughs> a lot of authors who've already had success in the U.S. Mm -hmm. on Kindle will come to Kobo to find success, not just in Canada, not just in... Um, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, but they're also mm -hmm. finding sales in countries that you know many of us have never, have never heard of. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Joanna Penn is a great advocate for, oh. for pointing out on her Kobo Writing yeah. Life dashboard, you know, um, uh, Burkina Faso and, and, and other countries in Africa that she wasn't even familiar with. I know. She's I heard her speak books. about that too, yeah. 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 And so that's a lot of fun. Now, the other differentiator between Kobo and, 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 and say, an Amazon mm -hmm. is that we don't just move into a market and, and, and seek to dominate and take over the market and push out all the other players. Mm -hmm. We seek to work and collaborate with um, retailers. So in Canada, mm -hmm. I mean, we were born out of a bookseller, Chapters mm -hmm. Indigo. Right. So you can buy ebooks through this retail location. You mm -hmm. buy Kobo Books. So we, we partner with them. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., we've partnered with independent booksellers. So you could purchase mm -hmm. ebooks through your favorite local independent bookseller. You go to uh, indie, um, indiebound.org yeah. to find a list of I which like that. I like that because yeah. it's the, the indie bookstores, though, I love them. You know, I mean, obviously the big yeah. box things are closed down and they start selling stationery and coffee instead of books, you know, so. Exactly. But, yeah, but, um, but <laughs> so we, we want to support our indie bookstores and it, I, I, you know, it appears that they don't sell um, ebooks, so. Well, it's not easy for them to sell ebooks yeah, because right. their primary market is based around print distribution. Yeah, it's an so for their yeah. customers who want to buy ebooks but don't want to leave the indie bookstore, mm -hmm. they can purchase Kobo ebooks through the indie bookstore's website. And the indie bookstore still gets money for that. Good. We did that in partnership with the American Booksellers Association. Okay. But in countries around the globe, we have retail partners. In uh, in the UK, we're partnered with. Both W. H. Smith, which is you know a major chain, mm -hmm. as well as the Independent Booksellers Alliance in in the U. K. We have mm -hmm. Fnac in France mm -hmm. and uh, Montadori and and Fastronelli in mm -hmm. Italy and Bol in the Netherlands and so in in pretty much every major market that we're in, it's not just that you can buy your books from Kobo.com, but you can also buy Kobo books through your favorite bookstore for three your favorite every so, it's not, yeah, so it sounds like it's important for authors not to just go to Amazon for everything right I mean well you, well, you that is kind of like I, I like to equate that that's kind of like saying um, I'm a movie distributor and I've made mm -hmm. a DVD and I'm only gonna stock it at uh, Blockbuster yeah. meaning uh, y if you walk into a Blockbuster you're, you're fine you find it, it yeah. but if you walk into any other video retailer you're never gonna find it 
So that's you, so you have like, a lot of authors that um, that are not on Amazon, or or they do books. Oh, I, or, no, I, I will no. find that there's a lot of authors that, because Amazon's the world's largest bookseller. Yeah, everybody knows about Amazon. Oh, sure. What happens is they don't think beyond that. They don't think that you know we have 20 million customers at Kobo. And, oh, wow. you know, there's probably some crossover with customers who, mm -hmm. you know, are customers of multiple places. I'm, I'm a customer of multiple places, mm -hmm. even with, sure. you know, the three independent bookstores in my community. Mm -hmm. I shop at all three of them. Sure. I don't just shop at one of them. So, you know, I, I may buy stuff from Kindle. I may buy stuff from Kobo. I may buy stuff from Chain Bookstore. I may buy mm -hmm. stuff from an independent yeah. bookstore. I, I tend to purchase books everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, of our 20 million customers, there's probably some customers who are also uh, customers of other retailers. But... If your book is only available on one retailer, you will only ever appeal to the customers of that retailer, and there are a whole segment of other customers who aren't on that retailer. Yeah, well, uh, and that's one thing that authors don't think about. Well, and the thing that we just don't know culturally as Americans is that you know there are other things out there that aren't in America, you know, and so of we course. just don't know these things. And you talk about people in Canada going around, uh, walking around with their Kobo's and you know the Kobo yeah. app and et cetera. So. What I'm hearing you say is we are missing a 20 million reader market if we're not taking advantage yeah. of that. Now, you took me, you sent me the link to, you know, I signed up and, and uploaded, you know, my book to Kobo, and I can't tell you how easy that was. I mean, it was just easy. You know, I had it in EPUB format, and it was just, it was just really yeah. slick and easy to do. So that part. Basically, yeah. Yeah. That part, you're, you know, you said earlier that they don't need an IT team and they don't have to, you know, you know, do all this formatting and stuff. If they have it in an EPUB format, you all, that's what you work with. Is that? Well, uh, well you can upload your EPUB if you have one. If you don't, we will do conversion. But I will okay. caution anyone that if you use an automated conversion process, if you don't follow the guidelines 100%, especially when you're converting from Word, it may oh, not yeah. look all that good. Oh, sure. So. Yeah, it, that, that happens with virtually any free conversion. So, I mean, coming with a with a with a you know professional looking EPUB yeah. already is the best way to go. If you don't, we have tools that allow you to get there. Okay. Um, but what I even do um, when I do uh, the conversion is then I take that converted EPUB and I usually use a free tool like Sigil that mm -hmm. allows you um, you know what you see is editing, so I can go in and tweak the EPUB yeah. and then and then re-upload that and that takes a little bit of extra time yeah but it also makes sure that my EPUB is optimized so for each platform mm -hmm. you know I make sure that when I load it to Kobo I have Kobo links in the book and when I load it to Kindle I have the Kindle links in the book yeah. so that way the customers reading on each of the platforms has the the, the easiest uh, reader experience when they want to go buy the next yeah book. well I, I'm also I'm a big believer in paying professionals to do things like this and so, yeah. you know, as a book coach, um, I have my, you know, we've used ebook architects. They do a fabulous, fabulous oh, job. They are amazing. They are the yes. They're so good. And, you know, we're working with nonfiction. It's different. If you have, if you have photos or charts or graphs and everything, you can't you expect need, them to, like to them. stick yeah. where you want them to. I mean, there's some yeah. tricks of the trade that I don't want to learn to do, you know. So, um, but you have, a, you, you're saying that you prefer that people come to you with the EPUB format, but if they want to do it themselves, you've got some tools that they can... Well, if you have it. an EPUB that's professionally designed and you're happy with the way that EPUB looks, mm -hmm. why not use that? Yeah. And then that way you don't have to worry because we use the EPUB standard. So then you don't need to worry about what your EPUB looks like on Kobo. Yeah. You already know what your EPUB looks like. You know mm -hmm. how it behaves. You load it and yeah. you're done. And, and that takes away a level of anxiety. Just like knowing that your book has been professionally edited, oh, knowing sure, that you yeah. have the best possible cover that appeals to your target audience, it takes away that anxiety. You say, you know what, all I need to do is a, a quick four-step process, uh, okay. you know, as simple as loading your book to KDP, um, mm -hmm. probably far more beautiful, um, only because we designed it trying to make it as intuitive yeah, and as easy, sure. uh, as user-friendly as possible. I mean, again, I, I initially looked at the design and said, what do I want as an author? What have I always wanted? And it was it was a sort of a dream job to say, to give the dev team my specs and say, okay, I'm an author. This is what I need. That's great. Um, and That's then, so good. of course, we saw it. Uh, we had about 100 different authors who were involved in our beta program that provided feedback as it was being developed, and that helped us tweak it. So, so when we launched it in July 2012, we had something that we knew authors would find valuable. Now, I have a couple questions for you. One question is, 
what would you suggest to authors who publish through Create Space? And I, I don't even know if they get their Mobi file. Um, I've never gone that route. You, you, mean, you mean Kindle or Create yeah. Space for the print? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, for Kindle. Yeah. And they. Um, oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you have a file that you've loaded to, to Kindle. Now, we, That's we true. Actually, That's right. We yeah. can convert your Mobi file to an EPUB. It's free conversion. Okay. And a Mobi to an EPUB conversion is actually one of the cleanest because a Mobi is okay. really. It's an EPUB with some Amazon proprietary junk mm -hmm. thrown on top of it. Yeah. So it, it is it's as close to an EPUB as you can get so without being an EPUB. So you can strip that out and, and make it EPUB. Yeah, you, you yeah. make it, you make, you free it for the world. Yeah. Um, and um, so, sir, I'm going to go back to the question. Um, for authors who are already on uh, Kindle, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would recommend um, you may want to, if you're, if you're in KDP Select, to, you know, get out of that program, unless for some reason you're finding it hugely successful and you're happy and you don't want to grow and you don't want to find customers in other countries around the world and you're just happy with what you have, that's great. But if you're looking to find new customers, I mean, get your work not just to Kobo, but make sure your book's on, on iBooks, make sure your book is loaded to Nook, make sure your book is in as many places as possible because you never know where that next great fan is it's already reading. Mm -hmm. Right. And can't access your books. So tell me a little bit. What's your pricing structure for? Because obviously there's been a okay, lot of sure. buzz yeah. about ebook prices, and certainly yeah. as um, so the author sets the price. So mm -hmm. so I'll start at I'll start at zero. You can make your book free as long as you want. No penalties. No requests for exclusivity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that there are um, there are strategies that authors employ that you know first book. And series free sure. or a short story tied into their yeah. writing that's free and they use that to get readers to check them out and then if they like their stuff they go and buy it. Um, now uh, the next highest price you can set at Kobo is 99 cents or 99 pounds or 99 euros um, oh. because we, we can't mm -hmm. afford uh, with the credit card fees and everything we can't actually afford you to charge any less. Um, that's right. And then what we do is um, we uh, and you get forty five percent at that low end. If your book is priced two ninety nine US or higher, we give you seventy percent, and there's no okay. cap. So there's a lot of authors who uh, get frustrated because mm -hmm. they want to do a box set of five books, and their books are priced at you know five or six ninety nine each, and you know they don't want to sell five books for nine ninety nine because yeah. they want to offer a deal for the the readers, but they don't want. Um, to lose money, yes. a lot of money by selling the box set. So you know why? Why can't you create a box set for fourteen ninety nine and still get seventy percent? Why should we penalize you? So like a lot that. of authors are delighted and are actually using Kobo to publish box sets. I love that because um, they could do the whole series. Of, yeah. You could have like the yeah. first book is free, which many do, and then yeah. you know you could just yeah. you can group them however you want to. Exactly. So great, um, authors are taking message. advantage of the fact that we don't have a cap on the 70%. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, with nonfiction as well, there's a lot of nonfiction topics where, you know, you know, 299 probably, you know, people are willing for good content mm -hmm. that they need. They're willing to pay more. Yeah. It doesn't, uh, the ebooks aren't 99 cents, 299. Yeah. There's a lot of higher priced books. And now customers at places like Kobo, uh, and customers in Canada and in Australia and New Zealand are already used to paying more for books than Americans pay. Hmm. Uh, you know, a paper, a hardcover in the U.S. Mm -hmm. will maybe cost twenty-five to thirty dollars. Yeah. A hard, that same hardcover from the same publisher in Canada will cost thirty to forty-five dollars. Wow, that's um, interesting. It, partially, hmm. it's the dollar. Partially, it's just the way that supply and demand works and, sure. and importing titles and all of the crazy economics. Now, in, in ebook land, the economics aren't as bad. The, sure no. the Canadian dollar is not as strong as the American. But if your ebook is four ninety nine US, then your book can easily be five ninety nine Canadian. Mm -hmm. And Canadians are going to go, that's still a great price for an mm -hmm. ebook. And, so, and you'll find the same in Australia and New Zealand. So a lot of authors that I talk to only think in American dollars and don't realize, you know what? There's 190 countries in the world, or 196 countries in the world. You're one country with one currency. And I know American currency is a, is a powerful one, but there's euros and there's pounds and there's Australian dollars, New Zealand dollars, and Canadian dollars, and there's rupees, and there's, there's all kinds of other currencies. Um, and customers in those countries like to see pricing in, in their, their currency. In their currency, yeah. 
Well, exactly. I know we're just so blinders on in America. So, yeah. I mean, this is really opening my eyes to a lot. So, okay, say, how do you pay the authors? Okay, say so they're seeing it in yep. Australian dollars, but I, I can only spend U.S. dollars. Yeah. How do we? Yeah, so how does that work? When you log into Cobra Writing Life, you get, um, you pick the currency of your choice, which is usually tied to the country that you live in. So mm -hmm. in Canada, by default, it would be Canadian, but you could say, no, I want to do American, you know, U.S. dollar. And, and then you enter your banking information. Now, we don't, let you, we don't let you publish a book until you've given us the information because we use that information to pay you. Of and course, we don't want yeah. you to be able to sell books that we can't pay you for. So <laughs> first step before you we can We want to get paid. Book. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we did this far before uh, Kindle did, and I'm very proud of that, is we paid you in the currency of your choice electronically. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, and, and and I was really really uh, proud of that, so mm -hmm. that authors could say um, you they know, know I, what I they're making, they it, they get it, yeah. you know, they understand yeah. it, yeah. So it was and it was exciting, and we pay forty five days uh, after the end of the month, so mm -hmm. we have a cap. It's fifty dollars. Uh, you have to have made fifty dollars in that in, in that, that month in order to, to trigger the payment sure. process because yeah. yeah. it costs money to the, transfer money. It yeah. costs yeah. money to, to to do these bulk batches yeah. and send them to Western Union to get the payments done. So yeah. we actually have to, I mean, unlike unlike Kindle, we actually have to make money to stay alive. Sure. Um, we actually have to uh, have mm -hmm. a positive outcome from doing business. Therefore, <laughs> we make business decisions based on that. So, I well, mean, that's another fair. thing, yeah, that's you know, fair. You'll get your $50, to, yeah. You'll get your $50 not, when you cross that threshold. Yeah, exactly. We're not going. To, the other thing that happens too is sometimes with electronic transfers, your bank charges you money every time you get a mm. certain electronic mm -hmm. deposit. So yeah. it should be worthwhile a sum of money, so you're not mm -hmm. getting slammed to get like a one dollar deposit account and then get a char a five dollar charge for yeah. for having that happen. But the other thing that's uh, interesting is um, we are more like a traditional bookstore in that we curate and manually put books in our front window. And we probably aren't going to spend a lot of time putting a 99 cent book in our front window because we'll make, you know, our 30 cents off of that. And, um, and then, then we have to pay the credit card company for the transaction oh. and stuff. So by the end of the day, we have a, a few pennies left mm -hmm. or we put a book that's 7.99 and we make 30% of that. And then we actually have some money left over once the bills are paid. Well, not, so now, so you're um, now you're talking about the Kobo writing life website, right? And you're, yeah. what's the front window? What do you, what do you mean by that? Are you just, well, no, I'm talking about the, the front window of Kobo.com. Oh, like Kobo our, 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 our website's more like a, a bookstore. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Kindle is a really great search tool. Mm -hmm. uh, Kobo is merchandised by humans in 16 different countries around the world in different languages. So we actually okay. have a global merchandising team okay. here in the office in Toronto. Um, most of our English language um, um, merchandisers are here. So for, for Canada, for US, and for Australia and New Zealand, they're in the Kobo office here. In the UK, we actually have a merchandiser in London who is there, sits there. We have merchandisers in Spain, in Brazil, in Portugal, in France, in Germany, in Italy. So we okay. have global merchandisers who, like bookseller, say, mm -hmm. okay, here are all the new books that are coming in. Which are the ones I'm going to put mm -hmm. on display on that landing page when you first come to Kobo? To Kobo in you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to share my desktop to look at the website, if we could do that for a second. Sure. I think yeah. Well, you'll be looking at the U.S. store. Okay, so, okay, well, of course I would, but um, let me um, go to here to Kobo, oh, goodness, Kobo.com, and this is going to be our, um, oh, excuse me, I, something's going on with my search bar here, okay, here we go. By the way, that message is not that your web page isn't found, it's one that I was on before, so. No, I know. Yeah, okay. I just want everybody to see that. Okay. So, where, okay. so, as I scroll, this is your merchandising that you're talking about, right? Yeah. So, and look, so this, you've got James top, Patterson. Top, My goodness. Top top 50, right? So, these, in, in the U.S. right now, what you see right there, those are the top six books, and then this is the seven through 12, and as uh -huh. you scroll, you'll see, right? Um, uh -huh. So, it's fun, kind of funny. I see right there, Red Hot Steel by Alex Pieper. 
He's a co-writing life author. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a writers conference. Yeah. And I know he uh, he got a book club a couple of days ago, so he's still sitting in our top fifty in the U.S. Oh, he's good. Uh, sitting in the top fifty in Canada and probably in several other Kobo countries. Um, so that's the that's dynamically generated based on sales. But then so, below okay. you have oh, I just my book club's book. getting ready to read this book. I'm excited about that. What, Girl on the train. Uh huh. The Girl on the train. Next. Excellent book. I just finished it. Did you? Okay. Um, and as you scroll down, you'll see there's different things, like our daily deal. Like there's a book that is, you know, $1.99 oh, now. Oh, here we go, yeah. But it was $15, and, and that changed every day. We have a different book, and we have different books in different countries, because this is a daily deal in the U.S. Yeah, Canada, of course. Maybe different. And then, so, uh, Ruth Rendell died. So we oh, okay. have a... In memoriam for her as well, which is, uh, you know... And then we have, you know, Magazines. you can try any one of these magazines for free for 14 days who have magazine subscriptions as well cool. and then there's a what right there what you see is what teens are reading very good and books uh, on film boy this is beautiful and i like you know that you can you, uh, you can search as well but a lot of readers come looking for what am i going to look for and so we have different features if you click on the ebooks at the top there Here. you'll see a little pop down yeah yeah uh, okay or if you hover over ebooks, my apologies. Okay. If you hover over ebooks. Um. Well, I don't see anything happening when I hover. All right. Yeah. Maybe if you, it should be a little pop down that that shows you an opportunity to go straight to a few featured spots. Huh. Well, you know I something. I think that. I there might be something yeah. that that way I've got my browser configured that's not allowing it to no, do that. It's not allowing yeah, it I got a virus up. the other day on my Mac, so I kind of stripped oh. some features out of the browser. Right. So. Yeah. That's probably what it is. But, but some of the features uh, that we do is we will curate books from Kobo Writing Life, and we will put them on banners, we will put them on lists like this, and they get embedded in the store. So if I, so I want to go to Kobo Writing Life, <coughs> it's just, is there a yeah. web address? For, is Kobo? Oh, Kobo.com slash writing life. Kobo.com slash writing life. Or you could go to CobraWritingLife.com, which is our blog, and there's a direct okay, link yeah. to this, this, this portal. So that's um, sure. That's where you would log in. Yeah, and this is where I went to upload my book, and, and it um, really yeah. worked out great. So anyway, I love what you guys are doing, Mark. I mean, it's very – I like it that it's reader-centric as well. And I'm going to stop the screen yeah. sharing right now. Um, <laughs> And the, re the reason I like that is because that's what books are about. They're about the readers. And we sometimes really can are. get that backwards and think it's about selling books. It's not. It's about connecting with readers with your content. And so that, exactly. that's where the focus has to be. And so um, so do you have um, any suggestions you know, for our audience about what kind of books do the best? I mean, what are the qualities of the books that are successful? Yeah. On well, the books, the books that are successful have a professional cover. They Thank have you. a beautiful cover, and not just a beautiful cover, but a beautiful cover that's geared towards their target audience. Yes. And if you believe your book is for everybody, I'm sad to say you're wrong. It's not for everybody. There is a target audience. There's a target readership for you, and you need to understand that before you even begin. I agree with that. I have, to tell, <laughs> I have to tell you a funny story because one of my clients is sure. I'm coaching people, you know, to write nonfiction books. And so she was writing on tax planning. And, and yeah. so anyway, she said, I said, so we, the first thing we do is who is the audience? That's always the first thing we work on. She said, well, everybody. And I said, no, really. She goes, no, everybody's going to read it. I'm like, I don't want to read it. You know? Everybody has to pay taxes, but they don't have I to read don't a book. I don't want to ever read a book about taxes. <laughs> so we ended up coming with a really cute theme. It was like this yeah. hiking theme and stuff. So anyway. But you get, you get to a theme, and that's a really good question because you can say, yes. okay, so who is going to look for a book like this? Yes. What problem does this book solve for yes. them? Yes, Let's yes, define yes. who this person is. Yeah. You know, this is a, you know, this is this kind of person who needs this and this is what they're looking for. Well, I, I always like to do an avatar yeah. about the reader, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, detailed thing. They shop here, they go here, you know, and then you just really have to That's important. Turn. Yeah. So, so the cover so needs again, to the, speak to the reader. The books that do well, the mm -hmm. cover speaks yeah. to the target audience. Sure. The synopsis speaks to solve the problem. My problem mm -hmm. is I'm looking for a good thriller to read. I just finished The Girl on the Train yeah. and I want a good thriller to read that is similar to that. 
your synopsis, your cover, solve that problem for me and go, ooh, this is going to take me away for 8 to 16 hours and I'm going to enjoy reading this instead yeah. uh, or next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are the successful ones. Now, the genres that sell the best, of course, um, are uh, romance and thrillers. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of the genres sell really, really well. But it's interesting because in different markets and territories – Different things sell on Kobo. Ooh. You may sell your romance really, really well on Kobo.com in the U.S., but the books that you sell through our U.S. partners, um, the independent booksellers, the literary titles, the academic nonfiction, sure, uh, yeah. the higher-priced books yeah. tend to sell better to consumers of the independent bookstore. Huh, so on Kobo in the U.S., you have sort of two different audiences. Yeah. You have one that, you know, the... Sure mass market right. genres, the but, thrillers mm -hmm. and romances and science fiction and fantasy will do really, really well. But then the literary and the nonfiction mm -hmm. titles that don't do as well there do really, really well through the independent booksellers. So mm -hmm. you do have But I just want to make a, make a comment here. When you're in the Kobo catalog, you're going everywhere. You're not just because you're yeah. U.S., you're going U.S. That, that was just your example. That you were That's just an example. Yeah, right. But I'm saying, so from Kobo.com, you sort of have two readerships just in the U.S. Hmm. So imagine in the 150 countries yeah. that we regularly sell to every week, imagine that you may have one or more readerships just from Kobo alone. So that when you are looking at Fanac.com in France, you're looking at a particular segment of the market who are Fanac customers. And when you go mm -hmm. to Kobo.com in France, you're selling to a different audience. Mm -hmm. So for example, Canada has a huge French population. So there's a lot of authors come from France and sign up for Kobo Writing Life who are now delighted that they're selling so much into Canada mm -hmm. because we have a, you know, one of, one of our yeah. provinces. Yeah, oh, because you do all languages, right? Then you have a exactly. large French the, population, yeah. Very large French population. Yeah. So it's not just that one market, one type of reader in one place. There are multiple types of readers in multiple types of markets. And that's the joy of the partnership we have with retailers. And it's the joy of recognizing that we're not all the great melting pot. You know, we're not all uh, Americans. <laughs> we we, there's we a think lot you of are. We think. I know. I know. But it's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting that, that to, to, I, I love when authors um, sign up for Cobra Writing Life and they experience something, you know, from other parts of the world. I find that's so amazing that we help mm -hmm. them learn. You have readers in New Zealand. Yeah. You will probably never travel there and go on a book tour in New Zealand, but you have people who you've never met in another country reading your book. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so there's two ways you can get your book out, out around the world. One is to put it on Book Karma and to campaign it through our international <laughs> We have authors from 42 countries, not, you know, 100 and some odd like you do, and to put it on Kobo because that's what we want. We want to reach readers around the world. And anybody who would be enjoying our material, learning from it and benefiting from it, that's great. Any, we're coming in at the end of our time. Any final thoughts? Can you just kind of give us one last boost as to what the benefit is of, of Kobo? Um, Kobo? It, is access, it is access to global readership. Yeah. It's access to markets far beyond the shores of that river that you're hanging yeah. around on. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of more, lot more people out there than we think there are. So anyway, exactly. I know we want to reach them all. So. Thank you, Mark. This is such a great education, Thanks, and I've really enjoyed our time together today. So, um, Kobo.com, right, is where they need to go. And so, um, exactly. you all are doing great things just north of us, and we appreciate it. Thanks. All it's right. great Take chat care. With you. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.